Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present our very special guest, uh, Mr. Marco Martomanene, a World Bank Country Manager for Uzbekistan and his team at the university. Uh, with over 20 years of experience in economic development, Mr. Marco Matovanelli has worked across Latin America, Africa, and Europe. Before joining the World Bank, he served as an economic research consultant in Europe and in the United States. During his guest lecture, Mr. Matovanelli will talk about the World Bank's new vision and mission and how it is developing a new playbook for inclusive development that does not come at the expense of the planet. We at TEAM work closely with international organizations and realize common projects for the benefit of our students and society in general. I hope our cooperation with the World Bank will not stop, but rather continue and strengthen in the future because we truly share the bank's vision and values. And I would also like to mention that our today's talk is happening on the occasion of the International Day for the Eradication of uh, Poverty that is marked annually on October 17th. And uh, I'd like to say a few words about today's agenda. So after my speech, uh, Mr. Mantovanelli will share his presentation with us. Uh, after the presentation, we'll have Q&A part. And after the Q&A part, please don't go. Uh, please don't go because we'll have a group photo, and I believe today's uh, lecture will be uh, a little bit different. We have other surprises for you, yes, for our audience. And it is my pleasure and honor, bros, uh, to give the floor to Mr. Marco Mandovanelli. Thank you. <laughs> Should I use that or this? Yeah, this bus. Okay. Hello? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, buongiorno. Um, I'm Italian, so uh, I'm very happy to be here with you today. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I have not been, uh, I have not visited Team University before, and I must say, from what I can see, it's beautiful. And uh, thank you for the students to be here with a, an old man like me. I know that you might be. Uh, uh, happier uh, to do anything else, but uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, uh, as the introduction mentioned, October 17 is World uh, International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, and uh, I would like to spend some time discussing that with you and what the World Bank does in this regard, because uh, uh, it is still a a challenge worldwide, in Uzbekistan too, but worldwide. And unfortunately, we know that uh, um, recently the trend that was positive uh, all throughout the 90s, uh, extreme poverty that we measure at $2 per capita per day, $2.15 per, uh, per capita per day, had been declining. So more and more people were coming out of poverty, thanks to uh, growth and development in China, in India, in this large populous country. Unfortunately, the pandemic has reversed all that. And so the indicators is deteriorating. Also inequality, which is, uh, you know, the, the difference between the top income earners, the richer and the, and the poorest, has been widening. So we're concerned about these changes. If you add on that wars that are coming up, uh, uh, unfortunately, on a monthly basis and everything else, uh, uh, it's a concern. So I'm very glad to be here to discuss these things with you. Um, let me introduce my team here. I have uh, Marina. Um, uh, Marina is uh, our staff member. She's. Uh, She's the super specialist in everything that has to do with social protection and reform of social protection. And Ikuko here is our poverty economist. Uh, uh, Mirzo, this guy against the column, is our communication officer. So I, I ask you to blame him for the fact that I'm using a PowerPoint. It is all technology. Uh, it's not Instagram. It's not TikTok. It's nothing 
fancier than that. Uh, the responsibility is uh, Mirzo, now mine. All right, let me see if I can go through quickly some of these things. Uh, I talk about this. Um, so I'll give you some data. Uh, I, I will not go through all these slides. There are 30 or something of them. So please stay with me and then I will ask you some questions. A actually, it, while we go through this, I'll ask you to think about, you are all students in uh, entrepreneurships, right? And exactly, business. Yes. All right. So uh, you should be familiar with the elevator pitch. Do you know what an elevator pitch is? Is uh, you find yourself with... Uh, a CEO of a company in elevator and you know you go from the first to the 20th floor and you have that time probably a minute to pitch your idea and convince that person to invest in your idea so while I go through this I will encourage you to think about pitching after my presentation an idea in a minute or so to us about uh, uh, what would you think would make a difference, uh, an investment in the private sector or, or, or a public investment, but since you study entrepreneurship, maybe public, private sector, that would make a difference in creating jobs and helping poor people in Uzbekistan. So we'll try to have a debate on that. So please think about that. I look forward to your ideas. We prizes. And we have some prizes, uh, Mirzo reminds me uh, about that. All right, so this is the pictures about poverty that I was mentioning um, before. Still 700 million people live with less than $2.15 per day uh, across the globe. And uh, unfortunately, uh, is there a light here? Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, despite the drop during the 90s, uh, this this share has increased. Uh, 70 million additional people were pushing extreme poverty because of the pandemic. So reversing the trend that has been positive for many, many years. This is a source of, of concern. Um, uh, the, um, we projected that uh, uh, by 2030, uh, almost 7% of the world population will remain below this international poverty line. There are different ways of measuring poverty. I will talk about it. One is this very uh, is income, $2.15. Of course, um, you know, $2.50, uh, you can be very poor in uh, a richer country or marginally poor in a very poor country. So there is a lot of people that are vulnerable. They're just above this level and they may fall below with uh, a disease in the family or a car accident. Anything can push you down. Um, the characteristic of poverty and inequality, children are more likely than adults, twice as likely to live in extreme poverty. Um, inequality, which is the difference between the richest and the poorest income, has had been declining, but since 2020 has been widening again. So we have more and more fewer people at the top that control a larger share of the world uh, income uh, compared to uh, the one in the bottom 20%. 20, 20 um, what else? Uh, uh, this slide sends the message that poverty is not just the money you have in the pocket. It's a multi-dimensional uh, uh, multi, uh, uh, phenomenon. It affects your capacity to be educated, your capacity to be healthy, your capacity to be productive and contributing to society. That is why we pay so much attention on poverty. It's a tax on your life and that of future generations, because it takes away your capacity to be a fully productive individual. This is what it is. It's not just the money that you have in your pockets. We know that jobs and employment, and here you as future entrepreneurs play the critical role, is the best recipe to lift people out of poverty. So we can do, we can build schools, hospitals, um, social protection programs, ultimately, People need a job, a good job, well-paid job to come out of poverty. And you as entrepreneurs play a critical role because 
uh, and I bring back Uzbekistan, yeah, an economy like Uzbekistan that is growing at good rate, you know, it's an economy that on a national level grows at 5%, does not produce yet enough jobs uh, to absorb all the young people and the demographics. And why? Because the private sector doesn't yet play an enough important role in uh, economy. So I'm really looking forward to your future initiatives because you are the future of Uzbekistan, you are the future of reducing poverty in Uzbekistan. Hopefully you will hire people in, uh, in your future. Um, okay, very quickly on the World Bank, this is our building in Washington. We were created after World War II. Uh, and um, initially we were one of the institutions of Cold War, right? Uh, the world was split in two. Uh, the, the assumption was uh, the world was destroyed, Europe was on its knees, and the assumption was um, we cannot leave this state of things uh, uh, for a long time or it will be a source of, uh, of uh, disaster. Hence, uh, funds were channeled to rebuild Europe and rebuild other parts of the world. And then slowly that institution grew and became, uh, took over a worldwide mandate focused on poverty. Okay, but the, original, the origins were World War II. Currently, we, we, we have 189 members who form our uh, base. Uzbekistan is one of them. So I work for Uzbekistan as my shareholder. Uzbekistan is a shareholder of the World Bank um, as deposited capital in our capital base. So Uzbekistan is a shareholder. Uh, we do uh, lending we, or, or grants uh, to support development, but also knowledge. Knowledge and analysis is something that we pride ourselves very much with. Uh, when you hear the word World Bank, World Bank Group, it's really five institutions. Two are completely dedicated to the public sector, IBRD and IDA. Uh, the difference is that one um, focuses funds that are uh, comparatively closer to market rates, uh, IBRD, so it's for countries relatively richer, uh, developing countries richer, I don't know, Mexico, uh, etc. IDA, it's financed by donors and finances poorer countries or countries in transition. Uzbekistan uses both IBRD and IDA funds from the World Bank. Then we have a private sector uh, institution that support uh, the development of the private sector in developing countries. The corporation, which invests with the private sector. The investment guarantee agencies that guarantees investments of foreign investors in developing countries. And the International Tribunal for Disputes of uh, Investment Disputes that tries to facilitate the resolution of commercial disputes. So a public sector and a private sector arm with five institutions. Um, we'll not bore with this, uh, but uh, 12,000 projects around the world since 1947. Um, our financing goes from grants to highly concessional loans to concessional loans, okay? And we have all, uh, uh, all this, uh, these things. To give you a sense um, of our commitments uh, uh, around the world, this is a portfolio. So this is approved operations under implementation around the world, about 128 billion in execution. And in East Asia and Pacific, which is this region, uh, about 13 billion. And to give you a sense of the importance of Uzbekistan in our portfolio, 5.2 of this 13 billion is Uzbekistan. So it's quite a large um, portfolio that we have in this country. Um, some of the results, uh, I will not read it for you, but we want to monitor results. Ultimately, providing funds uh, is nothing if they're not implemented properly and they don't achieve impact and results. Results on people, households, businesses, uh, students like you, uh, 
um, services, electricity, water, etc., etc. So that is, uh, it gives you an idea of some of the results that we have supported. Um, let me skip this. Uh, this is last fiscal year for us, so uh, uh, every year we land or, or mobilize about 11 billion uh, in uh, uh, assistance. And you can see the breakdown uh, by sectors there. This is worldwide. Um, now, let me talk a bit uh, about our people because we pride ourselves in being the premier uh, world institution. Maybe some of you will be interested one day to apply to a World Bank job. Here you have examples. We are, uh, uh, Ikuko is from Japan, Marina is from Russia, I'm from Italy, Ms. is from Uzbekistan. We are a multinational institution. Our staff come from all over the world. Tend to, tends to be highly educated, so we have a high uh, percentage of masters, PhD. Uh, so in a way, we operate like an academic institution. Our projects go through the same academic checks uh, of academic papers, you know, review, peer reviewers, uh, and etc. Uh, we are about uh, 13,000 full staff member and another 6,000 uh, on short-term contract. More than half are women. I want to put emphasis on this because we are particularly proud that we are gender neutral in this sense. Um, I'll conclude uh, the second half of my presentation is on what we do here in Uzbekistan for your information. Um, Uzbekistan, since uh, the new changes uh, with President Mirziyoyev, uh, is a different country uh, than it was before. It is growing, it is growing, but most importantly, it's changing. And uh, uh, these changes are beginning to show results. We know that uh, because we have assisted the authorities to develop a national poverty line, um, to measure poverty. Uh, you are young, but you may know that until 2015-16, the government wasn't officially using the word poverty in Uzbekistan. We were not talking about poverty. Poverty exists all over the world. It's not a shame. Uh, but uh, if you talk about poverty, if you measure it, you can begin to do something specifically about it. And it's only recently that we started doing that. But with that, uh, the, the national poverty line, that it was about 17% of people were calculated as living below the national poverty line, dropped to 14%. And this trend should continue if the reform process continues. Oh. It's linked to providing more job opportunities to people, particularly young people and particularly women that are not particularly well represented in the job market currently. Um, let me skip this. Uh, you will have access to this um, to this uh, uh, later. Um, Uzbekistan has very ambitious goals. I don't know if you read your latest Vision 2030 National Development Strategy. The goal is to double the, 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 the size of the economy, so the GDP, and at the same time cut poverty in half by 2030. These are very ambitious goals. We have seen it rarely around the world. I mean, we calculated that it will require an, inc an annual uh, per capita income increase of 9% in the years to come. It's a huge. We encourage this level of ambitions in Uzbekistan, but we also we work with the authorities, with civil society, with the private sector to say, you know, it's not easy. We really need to put collective efforts uh, uh, on that. Um, the challenge is, is your demographic also. You, know, you have a, a high rate of, of growth, which is a blessing, uh, having young people like you. you know, I come from a country uh, of older people. Uh, Japan is another one. Uh, our challenges are more on the pension side and having a, a, a very low base of young people that support a larger base of people in retirement. Here is the opposite, but the challenge is this young energy and generation 
they need job, they need uh, opportunities. So entrepreneurships and job to uh, uh, channel uh, this um, value added. Um, another challenge uh, is the one that I mentioned, the gender gap. Uh, you know better than I that there are expectations from society, from families, that the primary caretakers of the family are women. I mean, I come from Italy, it's the same. Um, however, that has positive effects and negative effects. One of the negative effects, it takes away time for women to join the labor market, because if you have to take care of children and elderly in the family, you don't have a lot of time to, uh, to do much else. So, but there are ways to address that and uh, a more balanced access to the labor market. You see here uh, 15 to 34 years old, 37% of female employed compared to 93% of male. That statistics needs to be adjusted if Uzbekistan want to become an upper middle income country because you need the input of uh, a larger share of the population. Um, I mentioned that we work with the government on measuring poverty and inequality. This is very important because once you measure it, you can do something about it. Uh, the government has set the poverty line, which has been updated now in July, at uh, you know 19,000 soon per person uh, per day. Uh, that is based on the basic needs. Uh, 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 you know what, what? What can you buy with this sum? Can you buy? Can you cover your basic needs with this? And it's not households; it's individuals. So, uh, on individual level. But in any case, that is what the government is using now to calculate who's below the poverty line. Okay. Um, let me move uh, quickly to a couple of things. This is uh, President Mirziyoyev meeting with our President Ajay Banga. Uh, the guy with the head covered is our president, the other one is uh, yours. And they met recently in Washington on the side of the UN General Assembly. It was a war meeting and we expect our president to come here. They discuss the same things we are discussing here. How to create more jobs, uh, how to uh, do it in a way that attracts investments, uh, international investments and technologies and things like that. Um, now, uh, let me conclude with what we do here. Uh, we have been working in Uzbekistan for 30 years. Uh, so we celebrated uh, last year our 30th anniversary, uh, where we have mobilized more than 9 billion in projects uh, and activity. Um, with, with a rapid growth since 2017. Um, we operate under what we call country partnership framework. It's something that we have uh, discussed uh, with communities around the country, with the private sector and with the government, and basically says, all right, what, what, what are the drivers of development in Uzbekistan to reduce poverty, to, to eliminate poverty? to increase uh, uh, share prosperity or, 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 or decrease inequality, and to do it in a sustainable way. Our mission is eliminate poverty, increase share prosperity on a livable planet. So these three dimensions, poverty, inequality, sustainability, are what drives our action here. And this, uh, this um, strategy identified more private sector employment. Okay, Mirso, you can show it because I don't have hands. In any case, I'll show you. More private sector employment uh, as one of the recipes. Human capital, you. Uh, capacities, skills, knowledge, and capacity to contribute to the economy. Um, a livable planet. Uzbekistan doesn't contribute a lot to green ga greenhouse gases but you are one of the most energy and natural resources intensive economies in the world. What does it mean? To produce one unit of GDP, of richness, one unit, you use a lot of energy, a lot of water, a lot of land. That is not sustainable. 
because you will run out of these things. Uh, you remember last winter, uh, it wasn't very pretty. And uh, uh, we don't want that. So there is a huge agenda on sustainability in this country, which goes through a more efficient use of energy and natural resources. And that's the third leg of what we're doing. Uh, gender equality I mentioned, and also supporting the participation of citizens in the decision-making processes. Open budgets, as the government is doing, community development operations where the community decides which investments make sense, etc., uh, etc. Et All right, so um, where are we today? We have a portfolio of about 2.2 billion with uh, 25 projects that are under implementation. It is the third largest in Europe and Central Asia after Ukraine, uh, after Ukraine for reasons you can imagine, and Turkey. Uh, Uzbekistan is the largest, and we work in different sectors, infrastructure, energy, water, but also human capital, as I said before, uh, social protection, education, health, and uh, the livable planet, how to make all this uh, uh, sustainable. Um, let me see, these are some of the results that we have contributed to. The elimination of forced and child labor from the cotton sector allowed now Uzbek cotton to be exported worldwide, and that's one of the things that we did. Um, we, 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 you know, new, new water treatment plant in Bukhara, in Samarkand, uh, the electrification of Angra and uh, Pap rail line, um, the very first in the country renewable energy solar plant financed by the private sector was a World Bank project in Navoi and it's uh, in execution. Just to give you an idea of things that uh, uh, we have done. We just don't invest, we do knowledge, a lot, a lot of knowledge. If you are a nerd, or and not in the negative term, but someone interested in knowledge, go on our webpage, you will find a lot of information and analysis, including on entrepreneurship and uh, um, labor markets uh, uh, for Uzbekistan and, uh, and the world. That's it. So let me stop here. Uh, I apologize for having go through a lot of slides in a short amount of time, but if you have to take away some messages, we are a development institution. We're focusing on these three dimensions, poverty, inequality, and sustainability, a livable planet. We operate through financial assistance to government that is subsidized, technical assistance and knowledge, and we are owned by countries, including Uzbekistan. So our accountability goes to the people of Uzbekistan because they are our uh, shareholders. With that, I'll stop here. Happy to take some questions and also to hear your one minute pitch. You know, what do you suggest uh, is uh, something uh, we, uh, a private sector, should do in this country to uh, generate jobs or decrease poverty or both? So Marina, Ikuko and the others will help me, but please, I hope you're not shy. So don't look at me like you're shy. Uh, anyone, please, who, anybody wants to break the ice? Question, first of all, cl clarifications on this? Any questions? It's a shy lot. Guys, you're going to make Michael think he did a bad job presenting because you're not yeah. asking questions. He's going to come and maybe even fly in the office or something. <laughs> <laughs> one question, so he's not upset. One, one question. Uh, can you clarify the question, the, the question that you asked before? Uh, the question for you is, um, I was trying to stimulate you, uh, you know, all we do is about improving the economy, improving uh, the opportunities for the private sector. We try. I'm not saying we are succeeding all the time. I forgot to mention this we go through failure and we should be crit criticized at time because we fail, but we try to learn. But in any case, it's economy, uh, private sector, jobs, uh, environmental sustainability. 
Now, you will be entrepreneurs in the future, right? You may have ideas. I'd like to hear some of these ideas that may impact on the economy, on jobs, on uh, a greener Uzbekistan, on uh, uh, a more productive Uzbekistan. And so I was asking, give me your elevator pitch. Give me your one minute convincing argument that if I have, uh, uh, you know, a couple million dollars, I should invest in you uh, and in your idea. So that's what I was trying to get. And uh, uh, Mirza is bribing you with some prizes that I don't know what they are, but there are some prizes for the best ideas. So the floor is open. We have uh, these bags uh, with our branded goods and three of the best ideas uh, identified by Marco, Kuko and Marina. So uh, authors of these ideas will give All right. uh, this prize. All right, but please, uh, let's, let's be informal here. Uh, it, it should be a conversation. So any comments or any suggestions uh, uh, or clarification on this, and then uh, maybe your, your pitch. Yeah, what is your name, by the way? Uh, it's quite complicated. Oh, yeah. yeah you can, my name is Kathy Zublok. It is complicated. Yeah. Mine is Marco Antonio Federico Luigi <laughs> Mantovanelli. Yeah. yeah, so. Okay. Uh, the, you asked us how we can improve Uzbekistan, right? Basically, uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, so the question was that you asked is basically what we can suggest for Uzbekistan, so we can improve yeah. the, from the economic side, right? Mm. And uh, what is happening right now? It's not a problem of only Uzbekistan. I mean, the citizens. I think the problem is with the government, right? I mean, they are trying to improve some sectors, uh, especially in the economy, the banking system and everything, but still uh, we're failing. As you said, you are trying to, you are trying to improve the economy, as like I said, but it's kind of not 100% success. So, uh, the thing that I wanted to qualify is basically what are you guys doing these days to improve the overall, uh, as you said, the energy and the economy of Uzbekistan? Well, all right, uh, you know, you're right, like every development process, uh, you know, exactly. it, it take, first of all, it takes some time, and then it's not linear, it, it goes like this, you know, you have, ooh, uh, and then you go back, and then you go up. The important is to make it, keep it positive. Now, if you ask me, but, you know, I like to hear your ideas, uh, there are a few things that Uzbekistan needs to do now to jump forward, okay? To, and you can learn also from uh, countries that have done it, you know, in the region, I don't know, Korea uh, and others. Uh, there is a dimension that is people. I mean, take away constraint on people from giving their best. That's, I mean, it sounds philosophy, but it's true. Uh, meaning, give access to education, give access to quality education to the largest amount of people that you can, but quality education is not just entering a school, it's you learn skills. Give skills that are not just dates and, and notions, but are problem solving, innovation, uh, exposure to how to change things, and then take away uh, the constraints, uh, you are entrepreneurs, so one day you will want to have access to finance, right? I have an idea, I need some money that I can afford without having to mortgage, you know, my house, my parents' house and everything else. I need to have some access to finance. Um, I need some access to uh, technologies that uh, uh, work. So. Um, a digital network that allows me, since I'm in a landlocked country, to to jump uh, barriers. So that's one thing. Uh, Korea, for example, did this very well over uh, many years. Uh, it has empowered people to uh, contribute to their full. Uh, that's one element. Uh, the other one is, uh, and again, this is my opinion, and this is what we discuss with the government. You still have an economy that is in transition, right? From an economic model to a new one. You, uh, the old economic model was the state-mandated uh, model. You know, 
quotas, uh, prices control, etc., you're moving to more a model of competition. Okay? But you have not done that passage completely. So uh, you as an entrepreneur of a small company you created, you face maybe competition from a gigantic state-owned enterprise. And uh, you're squeezed. You, you need to be protected to grow. And, um, and the state-owned enterprises should not get undue advantages like preferential access to financing or to electricity and things like that. What about, like the, for example, as you mentioned, the, you are coming here us to give the background information about the world banking so that we can get some amount of money so we can create our own projects. And as you said, the problem in Uzbekistan is right now about the education. And actually, is, is there any possibility, for example, we are the freshmen of the second year uh, students here, uh, is there any possibility if you can get us some internships in international uh, companies so that we can improve our knowledge? Yeah, uh, look, that's an important element of what I'm saying. Uh, it's not something that the World Bank alone can do to solve everything. We do have uh, programs of, uh, but they tend to be for um, more people who are in a master level program. Uh, preferential, for example, we, I wouldn't call it an internship, but it is a, a period of work with the World Bank, you know, and then uh, come out a couple of years in the World Bank and gone out. Uh, we are working, and Marina is an expert in this, in creating systems around the world where graduates come out and there is a system that matches them with opportunities in the private sector to gain experience, entrepreneurship, um, no, internship programs and stuff like that. It's what we call transition school to work. We do recognize that from school you may get a lot, but not everything you need to be a credible uh, entrepreneur or credible whatever you want to be. projects in different countries. I'm working on a project in the Kurdish Republic, not here, where but, but these are very often targeted at vulnerable population. You're, you're not vulnerable. <laughs> you look okay. No you are in a good institution. Huh? So we as an organization that tries to deal with poverty, we try to look at the vulnerable groups, people who cannot get jobs easier. So we have a program now in the Kurdish Republic where we're trying to get young people but with specific vulnerabilities and match, give them a little bit of training and dancing, and then uh, organize the private sector training. We work very actively with business associations, and we actually try to make these connections. And this is very important and needs to happen in many countries. And I'm sure what you're asking your university is actually doing. Uh, I think that's the whole kind of logic of it. Thanks. Of course, there is one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh, back. Like, I was a student of Poland, I studied in Poland, yeah. and uh, I'm a transfer student here. So basically, as a freshman in Poland, as a first year graduate, we had even some internships in the private sec yeah. sectors. Yeah. Uh, but here, coming to Uzbekistan, I have studied even in some other universities, right? I just tried to, to be as a transfer student. I'm not going to mention the, the university name, but still, the students who were my group mates, especially, right? They're not mature enough to go and uh, work in their specialities. I mean, in major. So uh, that's what that what I was offering is basically maybe that's the best way of giving them while they're getting the internships. Maybe we can also be paid. Now that's a, that's an important thing and. Now, th thanks for your intervention. I'll see also if somebody else has something to say. Um, um, my son, for example, they studied computer science in a university uh, abroad, uh, spent six months in a, in a biotech company working while doing uh, his computer science studies. So these things really help because they match young talents with the private sector and this is you're completely right it's something that maybe is not yet sophisticated in uzbekistan we need to work more on that it's a it's a partnership that the public meaning the the including the public university the public sector should have with the private sector okay now 
uh, my understanding is this university has been founded by the private sector, right? And so that's the beginning of that uh, uh, process uh, because it's, it, it's almost going in the other way. You know, the private sector that is filling a hole and, uh, and do it. But more, more needs to be done. That's an important element of what I was saying, to create the skills and the capacity. Uh, the last question. Is, <laughs> the very good, uh, best presentation for you. Will you be a fund, um, funding? Well, uh, I failed to mention one thing. Uh, we work, meaning as World Bank, uh, on the public side through government institutions normally. So what is said Because they are borrowing funds, even if they are cheap and, uh, you know, repayments is over 30 years, uh, they borrow. So in this sense, uh, our implementation model is through, uh, I don't know, a ministry creating a pro. Però, by. However, però is Italian. However, if uh, Marina's project with the Ministry of Employment, you know, she's working on developing a new one, includes this scholarship, you may be able to uh, uh, access these kind of things. But you understand, it's not directly with you uh, because it's. On the other hand, if you become a successful, moderately successful entrepreneur, then our private sector arm may be interested in investing in your company directly. So that's a bit the thing. All right. Yeah, we are currently actually, uh, well, may, may you say it because otherwise I talk too much. Is that okay? No, it's all right. Is that okay? All right, so we have discussed one element of this, and so uh, not exactly an elevator pitch on a project, but uh, one aspect is, wait, wait, well, till the end. But one aspect is this of uh, uh, creating skills and capacity and experience and links with the private sector as one of the element to accelerate developments in any economy. That's uh, very true. Is there anyone else? Uh, who could uh, suggest some ideas or ask any clarification, please? Please, what is your name? Hello, my name Hi. is Hi. Yes, welcome to Team University. Thank and you. I have an idea exactly uh, not to poverty, but actually to global issues uh, about dirty air. And so uh, I have an idea about that uh, after I created the uh, technical equipment uh, to recycle plastic to the paper. And you know that in Uzbekistan every year, uh, by my last Google researches, percent of trees is cutting and it's following to dirty air and and you know that would be some on the top of the rating uh, in dirty air in uh, in the countries and uh, I wanna suggest you that in Uzbekistan we can bring that this equipment and uh, if you know that in Uzbekistan we have um, many uh, plastics and we can recycle it uh, to paper. Uh, to paper and save our trees uh, to uh, do clean our air. Well, that's that's a, a very good idea. It's an interesting idea that to to a certain degree we are working on it. You are right. Uh, among the you remember when I said your economy is very uh, intensive in the use of natural resources and other resources. This includes land and forestry um, you uh, because of climate change but also because of the way the economy works you have lost uh, uh, land to desert you know it becomes desert uh, you remember a couple years ago here we had, even last year we had sandstorms uh, they're not very common in Tashkent but we got sandstorms here too so you have a problem of land erosion and that is something that you need to counter, uh, meaning planting trees, planting uh, trees that survive a arid, uh, a dry climate. Uh, and uh, as you said, 
recycle as much as possible what you have so that you don't have to use more resources in your production cycle. So uh, you're going definitely in the right direction. Uh, there are different ideas and initiatives um, uh, without boring you too much. We know that you need a framework to do these things. So you need uh, a like an environmental code that is actually being under discussion with the new Ministry of uh, Natural Resources, where it is recognized, you know, for example, you recycle or you promote an investment on recycle, you get uh, some tax benefits. So you pay less tax, some incentives to do these things. It's, it's important. And also regulate um, people who don't do it or pollute uh, should receive a fine, right? So you need a regulatory framework for all that. But the idea is good. The idea is important. Uh, there are already companies that have begun to do, uh, to do that. What we are trying to assist uh, the, the authorities is to do it systematically, you know, on a scale, a nationwide scale, so it's not an episode here, an episode there. Uh, but the idea is a good one. Definitely. Thanks. You may have earned a bag. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other, any other any projects that you're working on? Maybe you have already created your business or planning to. Could you tell about your project? Maybe it will be something interesting. Does someone ever created a business? Maybe you already closed it? No. Uh, who wants to create a business in the future? Maybe after graduating, maybe during the but I see some familiar faces. You have participated in our startup challenges as well. So at least you have worked on how to create a startup. Um, those who have participated, would you work further on further developing those ideas, for example? Can I ask a question? Sure. Forget about startups. Um, do you think, show of hands, it is easier for women in the labor market in Uzbekistan or for guys? Who thinks it's easier to go and get a job as a woman? Raise your hand. Anybody? <laughs> okay, I'm going to be the one. Okay. Depends on what? The sphere, you think, is fear Skills um, that I particularly need for my business. 
purposes. So it uh, doesn't really matter. That is the correct answer, by the way. Guys, in line with the later labor code which Uzbekistan adopted, this is how you should answer this question as future entrepreneurs, uh, which is another area in the world like this kind of foundation. You cannot discriminate when you hire based on the gender. It still happens, it should not. Be the, be the good employer, okay? Be fair and analyze people based on their skills. I'm gonna give you a bad for that answer. <laughs> no, we had the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I don't want to keep you here forever, but uh, happy to take uh, any other comments or questions, or let me know. I have a question. Yes. When I was doing, uh, I believe uh, when we talk about power, when we talk about World Bank and its mission, it's important to to. Uh, to make a sort of perception of power, because when I was doing my graduate studies in Germany, uh, I was exploring different topics about national prosperity, economic growth, and so as you know, uh, with, I mean, there was a paradigm shift in the 90s when there was a human development index introduced, because uh, in the previous century it was told, it was believed that uh, national prosperity is only about GDP, it was a GDP centric approach to international development. So, in order to, re in order to raise uh, the uh, prosperity, so to say, we need to focus mainly on GDP. And this uh, perception was totally um, challenged by Mark Bukhag, by Omar uh, Kesset, by the Brilliant World. Yes, and uh, basically, my research question back there was whether. Uh, national prosperity was limited to economic growth and the empirical evidence I made a lot of uh, theoretical um, uh, work on that and empirical evidence showed that uh, national prosperity is not limited to economic growth and we should uh, when we talk about poverty uh, I think the best uh, the best idea the best theory was proposed by Amartya Sen is capabilities and poverty, in his understanding, in his body, is not simply the lack of financial resources. Uh, the poverty is, uh, is when uh, we deprivate people, when we deprivate society uh, to lead the life of value. Yes, yes. Uh, it's less opportunities. Uh, and, and if you talk about uh, poverty in this project, we should also understand that. Uh, it's not only about GDP, okay? It's about uh, schooling, it's about health, education, and this implies, all this implies in the center of human development index. And for example, our country is not doing that bad, but we're doing, I, I believe, well, if you can focus other countries with similar GDP, we're doing well on uh, human development index. And this is a good, empirical evidence that shows that we are uh, on the right track, I believe, and I would like to know your opinion on that. Uh, uh, what do you think? Are we on the right track? Uh, what should we do in order to to uh, to raise uh, our living standards, so to say, in order to raise our national prosperity, well-being? Well, first of all, you're you're completely right. I said it. Uh, I think at the beginning, poverty is multidimensional. It's so GDP or income or you know household income is only one dimension of that. Uh, many years ago now, the World Bank had published a very interesting uh, uh, research. It was called Voices of the Poor. We were talking about poor, 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 but we went around systematically uh, poor neighborhoods and we asked, what does it mean to be poor? You know, And invariably the answer was the uh, absence of uh, access to something, uh, abscess or, or, or vulnerability. It was around this element. I cannot send my ki children to school uh, because they have to walk uh, miles and miles. And they, I, I cannot afford the school uniform. Uh, I cannot, yeah, it was lack of access and empowerment uh, largely. So it's completely that. 
And so we shouldn't fool ourselves that just by increasing the GDP, we reduce poverty. That's not the case. So that is, is true. Now, on Human uh, Development Index, and we have also our World Bank version of it, they're interesting because they are trying to look at, at these other dimensions be, beyond the monetary dimension of, uh, of poverty. And they all point the same, um, in the same directions. It is a mix of elements that take you out of poverty. There is a monetary element. You know, if you don't have a minimum of money, uh, you are poor. But beyond that, you need to have uh, access to services, access to uh, things. Now, Uzbekistan. It's true. Uzbekistan, on a number of dimensions of human development, is, uh, is not doing bad. Um, let's, let's take education. You have a good access to uh, primary and secondary education. I, you know, if you look at paper, it's X. When you go look at quality of education, well, then you start having some problems because uh, uh, now I don't remember what is our index says, but uh, over a course of a, what is your education, 15 years? No, uh, to, from, from primary to, uh, or, or 12 years? Well, okay. You lose something like, help me out, Mirza, you remember how much it is? Uh, but there is a percentage of years, like six maybe, uh, that are lost to the fact that the kid doesn't receive full quality education. You understand? So the potential is there because you have everybody in school, but you are not exploiting the full potential of it. Similarly, with uh, um, uh, medical uh, services, etc. Uh, you have access, decent access around also in rural areas, but then the quality of it uh, deprives you on some elements. So to, to answer your question, uh, the focus should be on quality. Uh, there is a, a lot to do on guarantee, but the focus should be on quality. On some dimension of poverty is also access. For example, in rural area, there is a very low access to potable water, and that it in itself is a challenge. So it's not just the quality of the service, it's lack of access. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. OK. So, there are more questions. Please. One last question just out of the rest. Please. I'm just looking at this campaign slogan. I'm just wondering uh, who do you address? What's the target audience for that? Uh, because definitely I'm not, uh, I can, right? I don't have the power for that. Like billions of other people around the world. So it must be addressing the politicians, maybe. But you don't need the communications for that. Probably uh, they will say, give me the money, I will have power, right? Um, because addressing the super rich, so I'm just out of curiosity asking, you know, who's going to end power? <laughs> Are you a marketing specialist? Or? <laughs> yeah, 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 I was wondering, yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 let, I'll let you discuss with, uh, with Mirzo our communication. Look, uh, our mission is to end poverty around the world. So uh, the focus of what we do is end poverty, increase prosperity, on a livable planet, but ultimately is elimination of poverty, possibly in a generation lifetime. Okay, now who should do that? Uh, I personally think it's a collective responsibility. It's true. Uh, individually, I may believe I'm not doing much uh, to uh, with my daily life here in Uzbekistan to reduce the poverty of a poor child in uh, Chad uh, right now. I agree. But uh, my behaviors here and my choices here uh, about the environment, for example, may save people, uh, uh, may keep people out of poverty uh, when aggregated with everybody else. So on a large scale, yes, the message goes to uh, governments, private sectors, and, institu and global institutions like ours, they work on poverty on a global level, uh, economic development, etc. On a micro level, I believe uh, we can all contribute.
to that. Uh, on a small scale, when aggregated, it can make a difference, uh, particularly on issues like uh, environment, uh, access to education, uh, uh, um, overall economic opportunities that we have the capacity also to help uh, create. So I, I'm a strong believer that we can operate also at the micro level. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe it was the last question. Yes. Uh, ah, here you go. So uh, just to conclude on this data, uh, and it was your question. So we have a human capital index, which basically measures, okay, a child born today in Uzbekistan, by the time he become, or she becomes an adult, uh, what percentage of its full potential in terms of productivity and contribution to her well-being and the uh, um, will have measured on the inputs that he re she receives on education, health, etc., etc., and it's 62 uh, uh, percent, which is in line with uh, Europe and Central Asia, which is slightly rise. We, it means uh, it, it's not uh, criticized. We, we do this in every country that if we had perfect education system, perfect medical system, et cetera, et cetera, our population in Uzbekistan could be almost 40% more productive, better contributor to uh, uh, a better society. Uh, I know that I'm talking extremes here, and, yeah. but it's, it gives you a measure, maybe not improve 40%, but 10% could be improved, and it would make a huge difference. Uh, thank you. Uh, we stop. Yeah. It's hard time to, to, to conclude this part, really part. We have another part. Uh, uh, do you want to give presents right now? Do yes, sure. Questions? Why, why, Mirso, why don't you give uh, out the present? I think we have enough uh, for uh, all the brave ones who raise their hands uh, and come up with uh, a debate and ideas. So please, uh, let's, uh, let's give that. <laughs> Who do we add in order here? Well, I, we had the recycling here. <laughs> here you go. Thank Thanks. you very much. And then uh, we have the gender entrepreneur, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, gender entrepreneur here. Oh, we had a good question here, I remember. Thank you very much. Uh, where's uh, the icebreaker here? Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll give, uh, I don't know, I'll leave uh, another one extra here for the school. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs>